Hillary actually evolved out of the need to find suitable fins for the different performing boards. Um, and then this fin here it originally was a dolphin fin, the original old dolphin fin. And then it had a, a really long base and lots of area in it. And when, when, we, when it came up with the uh, laser zap design, it was a much quicker rail to rail transition. So it needed a fin that, and you could actually feel the fin holding it, stopping it from doing the turn it wanted to do. So he s started, this was a, an evolution in itself. We didn't just make this shape initially, cut a bit out of the dolphin fin, cut a bit more out and a bit more out. And eventually this fin was the fin that went with the original early day laser zaps. And the, as a, the, the idea of the fin was to reduce the base and get a longer area of in the water, deeper in the water, that compensated for the lack of base down here but it was deeper in the water and you didn't need as much. But the advantage was that you thin the plant shape down and it let it go from rail to rail much faster and yet it still had good drive because of the, the depth of the, the fin was in the water and the area in the tip of the fin. Um, but then in early, early days of laser zaps, I used a whole lot of different fins. The finger fin was a much longer version, very narrow, but it had a long tip on it, and it actually used to break at the base because when you hit the bottom turn, and it was so efficient that the pressure came on the tip, and it would snap off at the base because it was only about two inches wide, but a bit of really quick reacting. But anyway, so yeah, you the sold one of these. You sold one of these last week. What what sort of board were going? Uh, the, the guy that got this was just riding a mal. Okay. Um, these are still a good fin, but they not they don't have as many efficient functions as these other fins, the, the uh, like the gull wings. How I came about the gull wings was. Uh, um, I was looking at paintings uh, and they, they used to just have a bird as a bird in it, it would just be like a, a flattened out M and I thought that's interesting maybe the uh, in the beginning the aboriginals must have got the idea of a boomerang off a, uh, a bird's wing so I put a boomerang, an actual, got a boomerang, made a fiberglass version, glassed it onto the board, and it, it actually was too uh, abrupt. You go down, it had, didn't have flow. It was too um, sharp on the front edge and the back. And so I realised then that, um, and I started looking at birds more, and I realised that the birds weren't so, they didn't have that sharp, they were softer in the front edge. So, and I looked at thinking about birds, I thought, well, what would be the most all round bird that I could use? And I thought of a seagull, because they're down, they're on the beach all the time, wind, rain, hail or shine, they're down there. So I was living in Coffs Harbour at the time, and I decided to, I got bread and went out onto the jetty down in Coffs Harbour on a windy day because I wanted the, book, the, the, the I wanted the fin to have drive, so I wanted the bird to be pushing into the wind so that it, it was driving. Anyway, I used to throw bread out and stand there with a the camera and took a hundred photos, but finally I got one that was right. <clears throat> I got it blown up and just cut it out and had a fin made and it turned out to be, um, this is what I call the original uh, all-round gull wing. But if I 
hold this fin like that, instantly you see it's a bird. So flying into the wind. Flying into the wind, driving. Um, the advantages that I've discovered since are down here where and you take a, uh, a 90 degree up there, there's a certain amount of this knuckle that's forward. And that actually um, pulls the board into the wave because the wave's sucking around the board and that knuckle actually pulls it in against the wall, which gives it a really, really secure feeling. And once again, the tip is where the, the length in the drive is, not in the base, so um, it, it actually, and it's narrow in the plan shape, so it, it was better for rail to rail, drive, all, all aspects of this, it combined other things that were lacking, I found it in this, um, and then that, that's like the all-round original version, which is the most popular one. That's 100%. Uh, this is 110%. That's 110. There's a, another version of it, smaller, which is this one, which is 100%. It's the same, the same fin, but reduced. A reason for this fin is to use it on a narrower tail board, uh, like a gun or just narrow tail boards, it, could, it can be used as a 2 plus 1, but I don't do 2 plus 1s, but it could be the centre pin for one of them. What about Dreamtime? Or? No, Dreamtime, you can use this on a Dreamtime because they're a narrow tail. Um, anyway, then um, there's, uh, this one's the extended tip. It's much longer in the tip than the, this one through here, so it's got more length, which gives it more drive and more hold. This is good for like straight out down the line surfing, or if a big powerful guy wants more hold, it'll do the job. But laser zap, Astron Zot? Any single fins, you can have a version of, one of these fins. There's another one, which is um, the straight tip, which is in between these, and it's sort of, it's more like upright like that in the top, which it means it's much straighter, and it's good for uh, maybe mainly on the face surfing, but because it's quick and short, if you get behind the, uh, behind the, on the white water with the, uh, the straight tip, it doesn't have the drive to, to drive out like this thing will drive right, no drama, and so does this, the original. But the, the straight tip is more for quick, short arc surfing. Um, anyway, well. And then the move? So these fins are all discovered out of necessity rather than just trying to come up with a different fin. This fin is what I call a move. I can't even remember why it's a move, but it's really good for high line, hollow wave, high line, down the line surfing. Alistair, uh, who has been a test pilot for many years, he's, he rides it in a, um, a, a gun when it's really hollow and fast. He wants to stay high, keep the speed. I mean, it will still surf anyway. It doesn't have the knuckle on it. But it doesn't have the knuckle like the other one. But yeah, because of its length, it's sort of, um, well, it gives direction. And because of its length, it gives a good drive and feeling as well. Yeah. So, that's that. Um, what about... So we... Move on to the smaller fins, the multi-fin boards. That's the original um, glass-on dolphin style fin. Still use them today. Uh, 
so they've, you know, they've been proven they do work okay, no problem. Um, then this is a, a version of the same fin, but it, it goes with a FCS fin clip in and out. It's the same, exactly the same fin. Um, and this one, once again, is the same fin suited to a futures fin box. Uh, the, the, in my opinion, the only advantage of a, of a removable fin is to be able to remove it when you're travelling. If, if, in terms of efficient uh, performance, the glass-on fin with the radius around the base uh, and much more glass up the sides is much more rigid, so it gives you a higher performance of, uh, of drive because it's much stiffer. It doesn't bend. Where these other fins, they're in a box, and if they get a bit of wear, they can bend and warp a little bit. They're still okay. This It's not like a disaster. You need to be a reasonably sensitive, good surfer to be able to tell the difference. But I get these made in... 100% fiberglass anyway because the plastics are a disaster in my opinion they bend and they warp and you, 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 when you see them in action you see the boards going like this and that's the fins warping out when they've got too much pressure on them then I've got a uh, a, uh, a three fin version in the gull wing you can notice that they're much smaller because they're more efficient than this fin. They've got the, all the, the right, the knuckle, the extension in the tip, much more efficient fin. Go from rail to rail quicker, got more drive and more hold. So that's the, the uh, three fin version. They're for future fins only because with that narrow uh, fin and that small, you can't put them in the FCS, they don't have enough base. Uh, and then this one is a bit bigger version of, of that, but it's a twin fin. Once again, it's uh, they're, because they're so efficient, you don't have uh, the twin fins that I do use still this style are bigger than that, but these ones. Um, they're not as big as, as, as that in a twin fin because they're more efficient and once again they've got all the features that you need narrow, plan shape show how much bigger they are with the, hold the other one up next to it the, the three one Yeah, definitely bigger. Yeah. yeah, and it's just this, this shape with the knuckle forward and the length in the tip, not in the base, and the narrowness, easy manoeuvring for rail to rail, good drive because it's deeper in the water, and that knuckle, that effect pulls it back against the wave. All these fins have been fully tested before I even let anybody ride them out there. Um, yeah, they've, they've been a, actually the three fin version's been around for years, but I never bothered to uh, release them because I don't, you know, you, every, what's that? What's that? You know, and I just said uh, I didn't want to be. Tell them, trying to tell people what they are all the time. But you still prefer the single fin? I do. Yeah. Yeah, well, um, for my mind, the, the single fin, when you put um, multi fins in a board, the centre fin is at 90 degrees and in line with the stringer. The side fins toe in towards the stringer and splay out. So you're pushing water straight away. 
the first thing that people get off a multi pin and get on a single pin is they go, gee, it's easy to paddle, run through the water easy because it's got less drag. Um, it's that simple. Like people, they talk about four fins and five fins and all that. The more you put on the bottom of the hull, the more drag you introduce. It's that simple. So it, you might think you're going faster, but you're not. Um, the, the, the single fin at 90 degrees has got to be the... The only thing faster than a single fin is a no fin. There's no drag. So, and that they are as freer and they're quicker. But they're also extremely difficult to control. Um, yeah, so that's... Just, but all the fins have been... They've evolved because of necessity. You know, like, well, it feels okay, but, you know, it's not, it's not really doing going from rail to rail properly, or it's not holding right, and that, so you try to start focusing on why, and then try to zero in and narrow it down. Was it the rail? Is it the bottom shape? Is it the thickness of the plant shape? The fin? And, you know, you can take one board, uh, well, you can just take a single fin board with a box in it, and move the fin forward and back and you get such a variety of performance. You move it forward, you lose drive, but it just goes from rail to rail real easy. You move it back, well that's okay on a, on a small fat wave, but you move it to the back of the box, it feels stiff, but it drives more and it's, it's, it's better on a, a bigger wave than a hollower wave. So you've got a quiver of surfboards, but also you can have a quiver of fin for your single fin. Yeah, you could. Or, you know, Try the, the difference. best thing is to just have a 10-inch fin box and, and, all, and a fin and just move it forward and back. You get a good variety that way. But if you've got a range of fins like this and this, and you get the same forward and back in all of them, you've got a massive... A, amount of different performance levels for different waves as well. Yeah, yeah. Like it's the same board will go different in different. Totally waves. different. Yeah. It makes you when you just when I discovered all this, it made me realise when fins were in the early days, you used to get a single fin glassed in. There it is. It might have only been a quarter of an inch in the wrong position, and and you throw the board away, it wasn't working properly, and you thought the board was no good, and that was the position of the fin. I mean, it could have been the board too, but everything is relevant. But in the early days, everybody was ignorant, so it's just um, been a learning curve. What's your starting point for the fin from the tail, the back? For the... From the tail to the back of the fin? Oh, well, from... I locate the back of the fin, starting point... Um, seven and a quarter inches from the back of the board to the back of the fin. So that's just a starting point. Now, it depends on the individual. If you stand further forward, you might move it forward half an inch. And if you stand back, you might move it back to suit your individual need and the feel that you want out of it. And that's the beauty of having a box. I mean, as I just said, a lot of boards got thrown away because the fin was in the wrong position. Yeah. But some, what, some guys might have 100%, but they actually might be better off with an extended tip or a... Yeah, yeah. Or the non... Yeah. If you get a big, powerful guy and he drives hard off the bottom and he's fully powerful off the top and that, usually the extended tip suits, suits him better because he can't push it around as easily and it'll, it gives... Use that power. ...more drive and more power. And they can hold. use the power. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's interesting. But anyway, everything's got a function. It's just a matter of marrying up the function with what you, you as an individual need or what, you, what you're trying to perform or whatever. Yeah. Excellent.
All good. Thanks, Jeff. Okay. Thanks. All good? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, this should do it. Thanks, mate. Bye. Thanks, Ian.